Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So as a lot of you guys know, um, I fairly recently, it was a month or two back, um, I set up some new cages for my Blue Tongue Skink and my Bearded Dragon. Um, I did do a cage tour of my Bearded Dragon's cage. I have yet to do one on my Blue Tongue Skink, but that will be coming soon. So I mentioned in the videos showing these cages that these were some cages that I actually built myself. They were like DIY and a lot of you guys were super super curious about them. So um, and a lot of you guys requested a video asking how these cages were built and everything. So lucky for you, um, that's what today's video is. So I do want to start out by saying I wasn't actually the one who built these cages. My dad was. I designed them and I paid for all of the supplies to build them, but my dad was actually the one who physically built them. So when you're seeing this video, it's actually going to be my dad. I'm just here doing the intro, but my dad is going to be doing the rest of the video. So welcome my dad to my YouTube channel. <laughs> so just a quick little rundown for those of you who aren't super familiar with the cages I'm about to show you. They are DIY custom 4x2x2 by two by two cages, so they are 4 feet long, 2 feet deep, and 2 feet tall, which is equivalent to 120 gallons. I currently have one housing a blue tongue skink, and I have one housing a bearded dragon, and I also am building a third one at some point to house my future baby Aki monitor. So these cages have been working super well for me and one of the awesome plus sides to them is they're fairly easy to build and they're quite affordable. So I believe these cages cost a total of around $150 to build per cage. So I do have two of them right now. So $300 for the two cages, $150 per cage. And that is um, Canadian dollars. So if you convert that to US dollars since most of my viewers are in the US. That is around $115 I believe. I'll put the conversion on the screen so that you guys know the exact price. But they were very affordable to build for the size that they are. If you were to buy a cage this size I would say you're paying at least $300. So by building your own it does you know save at least half of the price if not more. And I've been using these cages for like over a month now and they have proven to be really reliable. I've not had a single issue with them and I've really been loving them so far. Do also want to quickly say at one point during filming the cage build the camera died and my dad or I didn't catch it right away so the video does kind of cut off so once it cuts off I'm going to do my best to show you guys the cages and explain what happened next but the majority of the cage build is in this video so even though we did lose a little bit I still want to show it to you guys because I do think that it will be helpful regardless and then I will try to finish it off the best that I can. So with all of that said let's just get right on into the video and see how my dad built these cages. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm Emma's dad, and uh, I'm going to show you some things today about assembling the uh, new cage units that she wanted for her reptiles. And uh, we're going to start with just some of the basic components here. When you're building anything that is essentially a box, certainly there's not a whole lot to it, but you do need to account for the size of the, the wood that you're working with. Now, in this case, these two panels are going to be the top and bottom. So this is half inch melamine, and these are effectively two by four panels. The key thing really that you need to take into consideration is what you're going to put on the back of it. Now, this is also melamine, but it's very thin. This is only eight inch melamine, and it's just plain brown on the back you can see it's coated white on the other side, but it's very thin, very flexible. And I'm using this just because it's light. It uh, doesn't add much weight to the unit. Okay, so again, this is going to be the back. This panel and the other panel just like it will be the top and bottom. Now, then we have the side panels, but this is where you have to take into consideration the thickness of the wood. Because again, this one is 
two feet across, pretty much, then this piece is going to sit this way, sideways here. It's going to, to, to go that way, as opposed to this way. Okay, so it's from this point, it's going on the front of it instead of on the top. So that changes the height of the unit. So it's going to be the bottom panel, the height of the side panel, then the top panel. That in total has to equal the entire size of this. So again, from this angle, this is the bottom, this is the back, and then again, this will sit here in between them. So once we have the top panel on, there's a little bit of space left over to accommodate that top panel. So that's what it will look like by the time it's done. There's a little bit of space left over. I'm not sure if you can see that from here, but that makes sure that the back panel covers the entire opening perfectly and doesn't overhang or underhang. Okay, so we'll see what we mean in a little bit of detail once this is done. All right, so here's the box essentially assembled with again our top and bottom and our two side panels. And this will help to illustrate again how you need to take into consideration the thickness of the wood that you're working with. So again, the side panels are essentially on top of the bottom and underneath the top as opposed to overlapping here. So this means that the entire height of the whole unit has to be, in this case, 24 inches. So again, this is half inch wood in this case. The first one that I built actually was 5 eighths uh, of melamine. So that changes the height a little bit more, but you need to ensure again that this total length is 24. So this piece has to include the width of the top and bottom. So essentially the width of this piece here is 23 inches, plus a half inch, plus a half inch, gets you 24. And then that perfectly matches the width of the backing piece. So that now perfectly covers the whole unit. It's exactly 24 high by 48 long. And this is now ready to assemble. It's only being held together with clamps at this point but we're going to put screws in all along the top and bottom and then the same thing on the other side and then this piece can just be nailed in using fairly standard finishing nails just like you might have seen on a bookcase and maybe you have at home again this is fairly light and fairly flexible but once it's nailed down it does prevent the unit from doing this it keeps it nice and square so basically, by the time we get these screws in and the back nailed on, we'll have the box ready to go. Okay, so now there are screws in place, so the box is relatively secured. There's only two on either end for the time being. We'll add more to make it a little more sturdy once we have the back on. But now that we have all the screws in, we are ready to put the back on. And what this helps with is to prevent this 
kind of misshapen here. If you get the back on and it matches all four corners, you know that it's straight. And you can just start with one corner and then go to the opposite corner and make sure it's lining up there. And again, that will eliminate and prevent it from this kind of back and forth wobble. So we'll just use some small finishing nails. Okay, so that's all we need to do is put in a single nail in one corner. Then we go to the exact opposite corner and make sure that it's lined up here. Then nail this one in. And if it's lining up on both corners, then you already know that the unit is square. So now we just have to finish off nailing the rest of the finished nails. Okay, so with the back in place now, this is going to be pretty rigid, but before I move it at all, I'm still gonna add some extra screws to the top and bottom so that there are at least three to make sure that it's good and stable. But just adding the back now, it allows me to move it around entirely without any wobble. It's nice and rigid so that it won't uh, lose its shape at all. So I've got three screws in place now on each side, and that should be plenty for just a two foot span. But if you wanted to put four or even five, that certainly would be fine. And maybe we'll add some later, but that's enough to keep everything strong at this point. And in terms of drilling, when you are working with melamine, you definitely want to pre-drill. This wood will split quite easily. So ensure that you pre-drill for the screw itself and you probably can't see, but then countersink a little bit as well because you want it to not only be flush with the surface or a little bit underneath, if you try to just drive it in without a countersink hole, it'll crush the top as well. The, the material will split and, and, and break. So pre-drill the hole, countersink, and then insert your screw. Make sure your screw is at least double the width of the width of the wood you're working with. Uh, maybe even a little bit more. I used an inch and a half screw, so it's going an inch into the wood as well. And that certainly should be plenty, but again, with only three screws on either side and the back on, we can see now that we can lift this up. It maintains its shape, no problem. It doesn't wobble. Spin it around and you can see it's pretty stable front to back. Now there's certainly more that we'll do on the front here to help stabilize it even a little bit more, but there is essentially the box. Again, this will be the top and bottom and uh, our side panels. Now what we're going to do with the front face is have a piece along the bottom here so that we can contain the substrate. And then the rest is really just so that we have somewhere to mount the doors. So there's going to be a top piece that will go in there. And then the bottom piece will go there. And obviously I'm just loose fitting these for the time being. They might need to be trimmed a little bit, but these were cut from the same four foot piece as these side panels. And then again, accounting for the thickness of the wood. So if this is truly 48, then this will be 47. Okay, and again, it might need to be slightly trimmed a little bit. Looks like it's slightly too long, but that's what it's going to look like on the, along the top and bottom. And then we have side pieces, and these are an inch and a half wide. 
as is this top piece, the bottom piece is four inches. Okay, so then these will run in between. So that will be the side panel there, and then another one on the bottom. And then I have a two inch piece that's just going to go right in the middle. And this basically is just going to allow us to, to have a frame to mount the doors. Now in this case for the doors, We are fortunate enough to find this shelf, which comes as is from Ikea. So we didn't have to build anything. This was only $25. So of course we need two, but they'll mount on those framing pieces. And uh, it's, it's a little heavy, but nothing too serious. But uh, again, perfect size and just uh, really couldn't have been made any, any better for a unit of this size. So again, available at IKEA. They actually sell it as a shell, but works perfectly in our case for a door. So we of course had to buy hinges and a latch, but uh, other than that, it works as a perfect door. And uh, if we had to buy the materials to build this, I can't imagine it would have come in less than $25. Even if you use plexiglass, uh, a sheet of plexiglass would probably be uh, at least $20 for for uh, that size, maybe a little bit less, but all ready to go. And then finally, there are just going to be two vents. These will be the last things that I'll do, but uh, they will just go on the end pieces here. And those are just standard grills for any kind of maybe duct heating that you have in your home. So whatever size you want to use, this is 10 by four. And again, you just want to mount on the sides, both top and bottom, but that will be the last thing. Okay, so the front is completed with the uh, top and bottom bracing pieces now. Next part is just to put these side pieces on. And again, really this is just so that we have a place to attach the hinges for the door. So there's going to be one on the top, another one on the bottom, and then this slightly thicker piece in the center so that the doors have something to close up against. So again, when sizing these pieces, you have to take into account the distance between the, open, the top and bottom bracing pieces here. So just make sure that they are cut to fit in there and that will complete the front. Now, the other option would be to just take another complete four by, uh, excuse me, two by four panel and then just cut these up. That would certainly be fine. The only reason I'm doing it this way is because with half inch melamine, if I were to do that, just take a complete four by, uh, excuse me, two by four sheet and cut out the holes, it would be a very flimsy piece. It'd be difficult to deal with, it'd be very flexible and very easy to break. So these pieces are a little more rigid, of course, because they're, they're just smaller. So I've chosen to go that route. And uh, again, if you are using thicker, I mean the 5 8 with the 3 quarters, that might be uh, another viable option, but um, that's your call. Again, these will just mount there, one on top, one on the bottom. And uh, in terms of the screws, I used five screws along the top piece and along the bottom piece, and then also one going straight down on this side. Now I haven't flipped the unit yet, so two more need to come up from the bottom, but that keeps this piece nice and stable prevents it from wiggling and wobbling around a little bit. So really that's it in terms of assembling the frame. These pieces are the last component uh, to go in, then really it's just the accessories. So the hinges and the doors, the vents, and uh, some rubber feet if you want to. But really this completes the frame. So see that finished in just a few minutes. Now the uh, top and bottom bracing pieces are in place now. 
So the center one is the only one left, but this one's a little bit trickier because, of course, there really isn't anything that we are screwing it to other than the uh, top and bottom bracing pieces. So in other words, in order to attach this, we have to first locate the center, make sure we get it in the right place, but then we pretty much have to uh, toenail or put a screw in on an angle to make sure that uh, we get this attached nice and strong for the center. So I'm going to pre-drill a hole on about a 45 degree angle, one on the top and one on the bottom, on opposite sides so it won't wobble or wiggle, and then I'll be able to attach that one. Now even though I pre-drilled this piece, the center one, once I put the screw in, it actually did cause some splitting, so I'm switching to some nails, and they're fairly long and uh, a good size, so they should work just fine. And I've marked the center of the piece and the center of the front, and I just have to make sure that those lines match up with each other, and it will be perfectly in the center. Okay, so there is the unit essentially completed in terms of the frame. So once again, these shelves from Ikea will act as the doors. They will mount right there, which is some standard hinges from any local hardware store. And they'll open this way, of course, so one on top, one on the bottom, and then uh, just some kind of latch to, uh, to keep them closed. Now, We'll have to be mindful about that. The frame around the edge of these is not very thick. So we did find a lack. Okay, so this is where the um, camera died and we didn't catch it. So as you can see, most of the cage is done. It's kind of just the accessories that weren't filmed, such as the doors and the vents. So I don't have any footage of how they were actually attached, but I'm going to do my best to show you guys and explain it because since they are just the smaller details, I think it will be fairly easy to explain it. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Okay, so these are what the cages look like finished. So I know when we left off in the like tutorial on how to build them, the doors weren't attached and neither were the vents. So I'm going to try to go over those things with you guys a bit so that you guys can get a better idea of how these all work since we unfortunately don't have any footage of it. So as my dad described earlier in the video, these doors are actually shelves from Ikea. So I happen to find these online and they just make the perfect size for doors if you want like front opening as opposed to like sliding doors. They work out so, so well. As you guys can see, they just, you know, <laughs> like they look like they were made to fit these cages. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about how these were attached. So it's actually very simple how these doors were attached. Um, basically, you would just want to get some hinges. You want to make sure that they're strong enough to hold the weight of the doors. Because like I said, or as my dad mentioned, they are a little bit heavy, but it's nothing that extreme and the hinges were attached on the inside so that you know it opens and closes like this and so we basically just attached one you know close to the top of the door you screwed it into the cage and the door and then another one near the bottom of the cage again screwed it into the cage and then into the door and then you have a door attached to the cage. Exact same thing over here, one hinge near the top and one hinge near the bottom. 
and these have supported the doors just fine as i mentioned before i have had these cages set up for a month or two now and there have been absolutely no issues with them at all and then when it comes to latching the door shut we actually just use these internal latches so the door kind of just pops into it and then pops out now I do want to mention if you are building a cage like this for an animal that has a lot of strength such as a snake you would definitely want some sort of lock on the front but with the animals that I'm housing in here such as a bearded dragon and a blue tongue skink neither of them are strong enough to push on the doors and open them it does actually take quite a bit of force obviously I can do it but the lizards in here are not able to but if you are using this for a stronger animal, like again, a snake, I would highly recommend having some sort of latch on the door so that they absolutely cannot push it open. But if you are housing an animal such as a bearded dragon, these are more than suitable because like I said, they just do not have the strength to push this open themselves. And then for the knobs, these are just some silver knobs that I picked up at the hardware store. They were like a few dollars. You can really use whatever you like. These are just the ones that I happen to like, so I picked out these ones. And now let's take a look at the side of the cage because this is where the vent is, as well as there's a little hole here to run some cords out of. So there is a vent on either side of the cage. There's one here, you know, you can see the one for the skink cage down at the bottom, and then there's another vent on the side over here. This one will be a little harder to see but we did put one on either side. So this just allows, you know, for airflow to make sure your animals are getting the circulation they need. And it also does help a little bit of heat come out and a bit of humidity. So, you know, you obviously do have to monitor your temperatures and humidity, but these were very easy to attach as well. So essentially my dad just took a saw and he cut out a hole about the size of this vent and then you just screw them in. And then over here we have a little hole to allow the cords to run in and out of. So this is the cord to both the heat lamp and the UVB lamp. Now, once again, if you are housing an animal in here, which are, you know, known for escaping such as snakes, you would want to be careful with this because a hole this size could definitely allow a lot of snakes to escape. But since this is a bearded dragon cage, there's no risk of her getting up here and escaping. But if you are using this cage for something like a snake you would definitely want to modify this a bit so that the animal cannot get out of it but like i mentioned this isn't a worry for me now the last thing i want to mention which is totally 100 percent optional is the um melamine strip that i put along the cage so if you look on the side of the cage here you can see that the wood is exposed um, which is totally fine if you just want to leave it like that like go right ahead There's nothing wrong with that But for me at least on the front of the cage I wanted it to look a little bit cleaner which is why I picked this um, Melamine strip so that I could cover the wooden edges and just give it a bit of a cleaner look So this is just something I picked up for a few dollars at the hardware store And then it basically you adhere it on using heat so I took an iron and I ironed this on essentially, and this is how it turned out. But as I mentioned, that is completely optional. You know, all it is is to make this look a little bit nicer. The cage is still fully functional without it. So it's definitely something you do not have to do. But if you want to, you can go ahead and do that. So that's about all I'm going to show you for the cages for now. Obviously there are some more things that went into building these such as installing the light fixtures, but I don't really wanna go into detail on that because you know, what you use inside of the cage is totally going to depend on your animal. Like for example, in this cage here, I have a heat lamp and I have a UVB lamp. Same thing on my blue tongue skin cage, I have a heat lamp and a UVB lamp. But as I mentioned, it's all going to be different regardless of what animal you choose to use. So how you set up the inside is up to you. But this is how the cages were essentially built on the outside. So that was it for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And hopefully this video is helpful to some of you guys who are looking into building your own cages. I really hope that it is. We put a lot of effort into both these cages and this video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. 
If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give this a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Also, check out all of my social media. It will all be in the description down below. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you all next time.